everyone. Um, another day, another hike. So today it is actually almost 10 o'clock and I am just at the bottom of the Merrick. And I've wanted to do this hike for the longest time, probably it must be coming up four years, but there's always been a reason for me not to. I was pregnant with my twins. Uni has been mental. Leading up to going to uni, I was working in a pharmacy Monday to Friday and then I had my children at the weekend. So I never really got a chance to do it. But today is the day. So this is going to take me about two hours up, a little bit of time at the top, two hours back down. So I'm looking at maybe four and a half, five hours and it's going to be good. I'm taking this opportunity on a day off while the kids are still at school. I can use that time for myself on my days off to get this little bit of self-care in. So here we are. We're going to get going. So I will see you on the ascent to the summit. This is the Merrick behind me. Woo! And it looks very overcast right now. I'm really hoping it clears up by the time we get there. I cannot tell you how beautiful this is. I'm not even a quarter of the way up yet and it is absolutely stunning. I really recommend this hike to anyone. It's beautiful. Here I am at Kolshag Bodhi behind me. And this is about a third of the way up the route. It's really nice. It's such a beautiful area. Just show you behind me. And I'm going to continue up the path that is here to the left of the body. And I will get some more footage on the way. So we are now leaving the forest zone part of this journey and we are moving on to the montane zone which is up through the mountain. As you can see visibility isn't brilliant so I'm going to do a wee pan of the view now in case I can't see anything when I get to the top. So here I am at the false summit nearly there. I don't know if you can see this. We are on the edge of a very steep ridge. So I need to be quite careful on this path. Uh, make sure visibility is good so I don't put myself in danger. <laughs> So I'm almost at the top. I had to stop and have something to eat. I was so hungry and I was starting to feel myself like flailing a little bit. My pace had slowed down and I was struggling. So I've done the sensible thing. I've stopped and eaten. And now I think I've got about 15, 20 minutes left. So I'm gonna hike on up to the top and you'll see me when I get to the trig point. I'm back at the body and I just thought I would take this opportunity to have a little chat with you about safety and the thing that has prompted this is that somebody in my life outside of the internet said they would really like to do this they'd really like to solo hike but the thing that stops them is their concern about their safety and I had to explain to them that everything you do in your life has an element of risk Everything, stepping out your front door, going for a drive, going for a run, picking your kids up from school, going in the supermarket. And what we do every day without even thinking about it is we risk assess and minimize that risk. When we're crossing the road, we look for cars. When we are about to leave the house, we make sure we've got our keys so we can get back in. We make sure we've got fuel in the car so we don't break down somewhere. We do things to break down risk every day. 
And when you solo hike, that's what you can do. And these principles that I'm going to talk about now are things that apply to women solo hiking, men solo hiking, groups solo hiking, you know, however you wish to hike. So the first thing I do before I hike is I make sure I've got a plan. And fortunately, a lot of the walks I go on are popular routes. And you can go on websites online and look at routes that are already planned out for that hike. You can go on ordnance survey. So that's the first thing I do. That is the most important, is knowing where you want to go and how you're going to get there. The second thing I do is I take a old school paper ordnance survey map and compass in my bag. And I do that so if I lose GPS or for some reason I go off track, I am able to navigate myself back to where I need to be. The next thing I do, and this is another really important one, is I have a WhatsApp group with three people on it and I will location pin where I begin this journey. I park my car, the first thing I do, location pin to this group chat with three people. And that at least, if something happens to you, gives people a starting point. And then what I do is when I return to my car and I've finished, I will location pin again with a little message saying, back of the car, see you when I get home. Um, the next two things I do for like tracking my location is I make sure that I've got what three words on my phone. And this is an app that you can get and it runs by GPS. So if you've not got a signal, it knows where you are. And it's not an exact science. The little squares of location aren't always very accurate. Sometimes you could be in the square next door or the square the other side or above it, but it gives a general location of where you are. And even if you don't have signal, generally you are able to contact emergency services. And this location app will give you the three words. So if you get in touch with Mountain Rescue or whoever you need, um, you can give this location. You give them the three words and they know where you are. The other thing I do is I make sure I have a GPS tracker of some kind. Uh, I have a Garmin, I believe it's called a Vivo. And one of the features on it is if I'm walking and it's tracking my walk, I can send out an SOS signal. And this SOS gives my location by GPS and sends it to my next of kin and the contacts that I have in my GPS list. And that will just highlight that I'm in some sort of distress, give my location, and then they can contact emergency services for me. The other things I do for safety, and these are general ones that everybody should do, I always have an emergency life sack in my bag. So that's kind of like a bivy, it's bright orange, and it protects you from the elements if you get into distress. And I always have one of these in my bag. So if something was to happen to me and I had to wait a period of time to be rescued, I'm able to keep myself warm, dry, and free from the elements. And then I have two other things. I have a first aid kit, which is important because if anything happens to me and I get an injury, I've got a tourniquet to stop some bleeding. I've got basic plasters, blister plasters. I have bandages and things that I will need for minor injuries. And the other thing I have is sun cream. I always, always, always pack sun cream because even on days when it's overcast, you have no idea if you're gonna get burnt. And I have been caught out on walks where the weather has looked not that great and the UV's been high and I've still got burnt. So I am almost at the bottom, but I've just come across a, another hiker who's a little bit in distress. So I'm going to do the rest of the route with her at a very slow pace because she appears pretty exhausted and dehydrated. Is this where your car is? Yeah. And have you got somebody you can contact? Yeah. Okay, that's grand. Thank you. Okay, you take care of yourself, okay? Thank you. Bye. Bye. So I'm back at the car. That was my little victory dance that you just saw. And um, that last bit of footage that I filmed on the path, I didn't show the person, but there was a girl, as I came down the path, there was a girl kind of lying on her back, feeling quite ill, and she was too scared to come down the rest of the path on her own. She'd become separated from the rest of her group, and I wouldn't have been a kind hiker. There is an unwritten code 
that you help out other people that are in distress. So the last maybe quarter of a mile, I walked down with her and then just made sure that she was back at her car and she had someone that she could phone to come pick her up. So that's the end of my hike. It has been so good. I mean, it took me a little bit longer. It took me five hours and 20 minutes and it's usually kind of a four hour hike, but I stopped and made food. I stopped to get footage and I had to walk very slowly for that last quarter of a mile. So I'd, I'm not mad at it. That's the end of my hiking the Merrick vlog. And until next time, I will see you next time.